everybody. Happy Wooly Wednesday. It is Marie here at Living Felt. I am so glad you're with us today and all the fairies are too. I've just got a communication from the field. I'm trying to get to it now. And uh, Rodney says, you guys can hear me. I know we're goofing off here having a good time. All the fairies are right here in the wings. Happy Wooly Wednesday, friends. We are so happy to be here with you today. We today are going to be felting these gorgeous uh, poppy flowers, but I'll bring in even another color. It's a multi-step process, so you can make some beautiful flowers, and I'm really excited to share it with you. I want to say hi to a few folks, and thank you so much for joining us. If this is your first time catching the live stream, just say, I'm new, and you'll see that over there in the chat window, a lot of our friends are saying hi and where they're from. So we hope you'll do the same thing, too. I see there's Nancy Ray in Illinois. Noy and Debbie all the way in the UK, Stephanie's in Indiana, Karen in Canada, in Canada, in Canada, <laughs> in Canada, Jody and Lee in Connecticut. Hey, we said hi to you guys last week. Thank you all so much for being here. So Wooly Wednesday is a time for us to play together, have an interactive hour, and uh, yeah, we just like sharing it with you. For those of you who don't know us, thanks for stumbling onto our feed. We are Living Felt based right here in Central Texas, and as you will see we just have friends all over the world and we like to share fun projects that you can felt with so I want to just say welcome to you all and hey if there's some moms felting with their kids we hope that you'll uh, let us know in the chat window I know a few people have been letting us know that they've been felting along while they're at home with their children and that's just so special everyone likes to share pictures of what they made in our Facebook group and I didn't bring any from last week but last week we made these felt butterflies and if you want to check that out or if you want to share yours there's our Facebook group so join us there you can also follow us on Instagram and tag us on Instagram so we can see the cool stuff that you make with our fibers and as far as that goes that's where all our fibers are on livingfelt.com so thank you guys for joining us today I look forward to sharing this project with you and we have the fairies here I know many of you have missed seeing them um, during this quarantine time and so first up is Miss Fairy Hannah. Yay! Hey everybody, how are y'all doing today? Fairy Hannah here. So I just kind of had a little shout out. I know um, it's a challenging time for all of us right now being quarantined, being stuck at home, not being able to be as social as we all want to be. And this morning when I got here, I had the pleasure of reading a beautiful email from a Devin McCarroll. So Devin, big virtual hugs and kisses from all of us. She just left us the sweetest email about enjoying Wooly Wednesday and, and thank, thanking us for being here. And y'all, it's, it's just a pleasure to be here. We honestly, I think all of us wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. Definitely not stuck at home. But we're happy to be here. We really appreciate all the love notes and the kind words y'all have to share with us. It really does mean the world to us to have such a, a beautiful group of, of fellow felters out there to, to talk to and communicate and share with. So if anyone else out there needs to contact us, you can contact us on the Living Felt website. Just scroll to the bottom. A contact us form is right there. Or, of course, we're always here by phone. It's 877 Six six five five seven nine zero. Lots so love y'all too, and <laughs> hi Devin, thank you so much. Say, Hannah, such a sweetie, and you're so happy. All the fairies. We miss y'all too. We're ready to get back to to norm. Thank you, Hannah. All right, we got Miss Holly showing y'all some stuff next. Thank you. Yay, Holly! Yay. Woo, woo, woo. Hi guys! So I am going to talk to you a little bit about our Merino Top um, Studio Packs. Um, the first one here is Chasing Butterflies and it has a, um, an assortment of pinks and purples and it would work beautifully for um, the wet felting uh, flowers or of course any wet felting. Um, and then secondly we have Dreaming of Summer, which is our warmer tones and more what Marie is going to be using today when she does her poppies. So I'm super excited because I'm from California and that's our state flower. Sorry, I know they don't like that when I say that in Texas, but <laughs> <laughs> so um, these just we also have blues and greens and a monochrome pack as well as um, we, we have earth tone packs. We do um, a little bit higher. 
<laughs> so um, I am going to disappear now and I have uh, Miss Becca come in. Yay! Thanks, Holly. Woo woo! Becca, first show. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Fairy Becca. Today I picked out four different MC1 greens that I think would work perfect for the stems and the leaves of your wet felting flowers. We have MC1 leaf, MC1 shire. MC1 True Olive, and MC1 Bamboo. Um, I also just did a count, and we have about 17 different greens on our Living Felt website, so you can make it as personal um, as you'd like. That's awesome. Great job, Becca. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> up next is Anne with some tools that we're going to be using today in your project. <laughs> Hi friends, I am here to share some good news about one of our favorite wet felting tools, the olive oil soap. Olive oil soap in general is a staple in your wet felting tool studio and this is the one that we use. We love it for so many reasons. First one being it is so easy to use. You can swirl it in your water to kind of kick start things at the beginning. You can even just wet your hands rub directly on the soap, and then apply it directly to your project. Super easy, super fun. It does have a natural, earthy aroma, but it also has no added fragrances. So it's not, you're not going to get this overpowering scent that, that sticks in your project. Yay! Thanks, Sam! <laughs> Next Everyone. up, we have got Fairy Kayla to <laughs> share some more fun wet felting stuff. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm showing off one of my favorite wet felting tools today. Um, this is called a palm washboard, or if you have taken a class with Kate Kaprowski, a waffle. <laughs> it's her favorite name is that for what it. She calls it. Yeah, she calls them waffles. <laughs> They're awesome um, for saving your hands, especially when you're wet felting, uh, running it over the mesh on your projects after you've got that initial felt can really save your hands. Um, also, little note to these ones you have to use um, not aggressively because it can kind of tear up the fiber if your fiber isn't felted a little bit yet. But yeah, that's, that's palm washboard. They're handmade here in the USA. Woohoo! And yeah. then to go with our spring theme today, um, <laughs> it's so corny. <laughs> Your fans are saying oh, jokes, hey. jokes, jokes. So let me see if I can say it without tripping over my words. How excited was the gardener when um, when spring was here? How excited was the gardener when spring was here? How was he? <laughs> he was so excited he wet his plants. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it back over to you, Marie. Thank you. <laughs> Kayla's always good for a good little pun in the house. <laughs> Thank you all so much, and thanks to the fairies. So for those of you who don't know, these are the gals who answer the phone, who answer your emails and your inquiries when you hit the Contact Us page. They're the ones who pack and sign your orders, and they're the ones who package all of the fibers that you see. We lovingly call them the fairies because I promise they have magical powers. Hours. And some of you asked about Becca and whether she is new and actually she's been here for a few months but uh, since before Christmas but she doesn't usually work on Wednesdays and right now we've only been working Monday through Friday. Um, we've only been working Monday through Friday um, and so Becca is gets to be here now so since she's not working Saturdays. Oh the, the laughing emoji still up there. Oh sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> so anyway, Becca has been here for a little while, and I'm just so glad that you guys get to see all the fairies. Um, so hey, listen, this show is really interactive. You participate in the conversation, and we always draw names at the end to win prizes. Not everybody is watching the live show, so if you're watching the playback, you can't use the super chat, you can't use the chat window, but you can leave comments down below after the live feed. 
We have also been drawing prizes for people who leave comments down below after the live feed. And this week, I want to announce last week's winners from those comments. So last week, we made the butterflies and we gave away some MC1 uh, wool packs. So I'm going to have you just use the contact us page or give us a call. And I've got the two names right here. The fairies drew them before the show. So we have, I don't know if you're watching, but Norma Medina from Indiana. You're one of our winners. And and Rhonda Berman in Nebraska is our second winner. So these two gals have won prizes from leaving comments on last week's show after the live show. So hint, hint, you can do that too. And they get to choose either an MC1 Studio Pack or an MC1 Goodie Pack. Cool, fun. So we're going to give away prizes today too, but you have to wait till the end of the show to see what they are. So if you are excited to get started and felt along with us, whether you're watching in, whether you're commenting in the live chat or down below, say let's felt in the chat window and I'm going to look for, say, just say hi to a few more folks here. Um, okay, there's Jenny in Santa Barbara and there's Edwina says she loves her palm washboard tool. Those are awesome. And these are the felt poppies that we're making today. So I want to show these to you a little up close and personal and um, tell you a little bit about them. There's a difference between, let me choose two that are different colors. This one is made with merino top in Zinnia and this one is made with merino top in sunshine. Now they both have some luster fibers in the petals and I hopefully the camera is catching that shine a little bit. I didn't, didn't like pile it on top. I just wanted a little bit on those petals to kind of show a little bit of sheen and a little bit of dimension. But also what you'll notice is that these petals don't have wrinkles in them. They're just real straight and flat. And we're going to look at these a little more close in a minute. And these ones kind of have wrinkles. So I used two different processes. Uh, well, really one is this is an extra step and I'm going to show you that extra step today. And then what we'll do is we're actually going to be felting flowers again next week. So don't don't worry if you don't have fabric ready. I'm going to show you the fabric I'm going to use next week. So if you have time, you can make um, some more fabric for that. And then we're going to put leaves on them next week. So for this project today, you can download a PDF which has the supply list on it. We have for the moment posted a link in the comments down below, which you won't be able to see till after the show. Or you can go to our website, livingfelt.com, scroll to the bottom and click on YouTube videos, and then you'll click on 2020, and you'll see that the felt poppy is right up top. And if you go to that page, you'll see the video is there, of uh, the live show that we're doing now, and then also you'll be able to download this PDF. So it's got a supply list in it, and it also has a pattern in it because let's see it's pretty bright here we're going to be making individual petals that's the secret to these flowers and so it's a wet felt and needle felt process so I'm going to invite you all to um, go ahead and post your questions they're going to be coming to me across uh, across the lines here so that I can answer them. I say, oh, great, I see a bunch of let's felt. Tammy wants them to go with the butterflies. Lynn White is ready. Um, Jane says she's not wet felted and she's looking forward to learning. Okay, so today we are going to take you through the wet felting process quickly. So make a note, if you've never wet felted before, we have several wet felting tutorials on our website and I may think about posting this one in the slow format up alone. Uh, a few weeks ago we made a wet felt fabric. That's a very decadent one where we laid pre-felt on the bottom and then we used merino tops and luster fibers on top of that. I saw somebody ask what are luster fibers? We call things like our tussa, our bamboo, um, our sari silk waist, uh, even um, silk hankies, they're things that usually embellish on top of your merino top. So they might add sheen, they might add texture. And on our website, Living Felt, under in the shopping cart, under felting woolen fibers, you'll see a category just called luster fibers. And then they're broken into individual categories. We also have a uh, lesson called the Pancake Lesson, and on our YouTube channel, if you just search Pancake, <laughs> really, you'll get there, and it's just basically how to make a piece of wet felt fabric. 
and that is what we need to do to make today's project. So I am going to take you through it, but it's pre-recorded the wet felting portion because we'd never finished our flowers in one day. And um, I'll just talk you through it for those who are more experienced and those who aren't can then jump on those lessons and watch them a little more slowly. Uh, Deb Ward says, how large is, how large is the poppy? And really all I can do is hold it up and show you. Um, I don't know how else to, to tell you how big they are, but these are the flowers uh, that we're making today. Okay, cool. All right, and we're going to jump into it. So um, to some degree, I'm going to be talking you through uh, parts of this tutorial, and some of it we're, we're actually going to be um, doing together. And I'm just going to look for your, your questions as we work. Very, very cool. So the first thing I want to show you is the fabric uh, that we're going to be making for today's project. And I used merino top in red and merino top in raspberry to make this fabric. So let me switch to an overhead real fast, just so you can see. And I'll let you see how it looks next to this zinnia. V very pretty. This is the raspberry right here on top and then this is the merino top in red and on each of these I have some luster fibers on top I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can get a little bit closer um, and the lights uh, I don't know if they'll show show everything but uh, the luster fibers I didn't like I said I didn't overly pile them on but they add just a little bit of dimension and a little bit of sheen and you can see that a little better when there's not um, so much light like that where I am right now there's just a ton of light in the studio um, and what I found is, oh, I wish I'd brought in a picture. I forgot to bring a picture. But what I found is I really enjoyed making a piece of fabric with multiple colors on it because then I could kind of get a lot of petals done at once. So in our, I think I posted it on one of my stories on, maybe it was my personal story on Instagram, and you can look for me there. It's uh, Marie Spaulding, enjoy. I'll try and post that. But anyway, I made a big piece of fabric that had yellow and all of these oranges in it so that I would get a whole bunch of petals at once. So you might consider that. And this one is a little bit easier to see. This is the fabric that we'll be using next week for a different flower. So here I have a very hot pink on top of a not so hot pink. And then just pink and purple luster fibers on top of pink and purple luster fibers on top. So consider making yourself a piece of wet felt fabric and all we're doing is we're doing two layers of fiber and we're wet felting it with a pool noodle only. So nothing harder than the pool noodle because we want to cut the petals out and it's a two um, it's a two-step process. So Devin McCarroll says, is it fully felted or pre-felt? Devin, it is fully felted. It could be felted um, it could be felted harder. It could be shrunken down even more, but because we're going to cut these and then felt them a little bit more, I didn't want to felt it too hard because we're going to be needle felting it as well. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get your fibers together. Holly showed you some fibers, and I used, uh, for my original poppies, the Summer Flowers Pack. Uh, I, it's dreaming of summer sorry it's called dreaming of summer and I use that it takes very little fiber we'll try and weigh my petals here in a minute so I'm gonna take you through a speed process of wet felting the fabric it's just a few minutes and then let me answer your questions ans after and I'll talk you through it uh, a little bit as well so that you feel like you understand what we're doing so I'm gonna go over the, the supplies for wet felting and if you've never wet felted before this is gonna be like uh, you know trying to get a drink of water from a fire hose <laughs> so let's just do it shall we okay here we go, and thanks for being here, y'all. I'm so glad you are. We call our Nunnel Bubble standard small bubble wrap bubbles up. Hot water, our olive oil soap, an extra towel. Agitators include your hands, a palm washboard if you like, along with the plastic sheeting. Um, we're going to use the bamboo for our stamens, and then um, a, just a pool noodle, so just a soft core for the project today. To wet out, I'm going to use a ball brush or a sponge as you prefer. We're also going to be using our mesh in the beginning. So just enough to cover your project area. And um, 
I am using merino top in red and viscose also in a matching color and then merino top in raspberry and viscose in a matching color and then you're going to want something for the inner parts of the flower. This is seal, which is very dark. So I'm going to divide my fiber. Remember, we want it in nice, narrow widths so that we can lay it out easily. And we're not going to use very much fiber for this. I made a couple of pieces of fabric with multiple colors, and each one weighed less than two ounces. So we're just going to lay down two layers of wool and then put a little bit of sheen on top. I'm going to lay out about a 12 by 12 inch area and you can go larger. My first one was, I don't know, much, much larger. So to start, I'm going to have my fibers running side to side and then up and down. And we're just going to lay out a thin shingle. Overlap each about a third. And if you prefer the diagonal or herringbone layout, you can do that also. This is a thin layout. It's fairly thin, not micro thin, but fairly thin. Okay, so here we go fast, y'all, and I'm just going to talk while this lays it out. Um, some of you have asked, can you use pre-felt for your petals? Yes, you can. Um, a couple of years ago, we wet felted Christmas trees and we cut out pre-felt for those. There's also a couple of other wet felting flowers tutorials on our website. And I think on one of those, we might have used a pre-felt or at least on a flower. So yes, you could use pre-felt. Um, and y'all are asking about the weight. I made a large piece of fabric that was about 1.6 ounces. And each flower is weighing about three, when the petals are all cut, they're weighing about three, four tenths of an ounce. So plan for at least a half ounce maybe for each flower that you want to do. Um, and I'm not even overly, you know, shrinking this down. Really all I want is a nice piece of felt that's going to hold together uh, when I cut it. And what is that mesh? Grow, you'll find the mesh on our website under Wet Felting Tools. It's a mesh that I've been using for almost 20 years now. Um, it's just a really great uh, fabric and I like, I like using it. It, keep, it doesn't really stick to the wool. All right, y'all, so what I did was I rolled from all four sides a hundred times and then I flipped the project over and rolled from all four sides or all four edges a hundred times in the towel. That's what you see happening in the towel. So the bubble wrap is up and the plastic is on top and what you see me doing is quarter turns. I call them clockwise turns. So I'm just giving the turning it clockwise each time. After that I am rolling from two edges a hundred times just on the pool noodle and using the bubble wrap as my work surface. So this is all I felted and yes I'm using some pressure at this point and then all we're gonna do is wad and throw and just basically full it a little bit. So this is the fulling process um, that I did for this project and it's really pretty simple. There it is. Okay so after that all you want to do is rinse your fiber, um, just rinse all of the soap out. You don't have to do a vinegar rinse at this point because we're actually going to um, felt the fabric one more time before we put them on our flowers. And um, let's see, I want to see, I want to answer a couple of your questions about the wet felting before we move on to what to do next. And it says, could you use the raspberry merino with the red viscose and vice versa? Stormy, I'm so glad you asked that because a little tiny piece of my red viscose got on top of the raspberry. And I do have a correction to that video. I said it was raspberry viscose, but it wasn't. It was raspberry tessa. So I used raspberry merino and raspberry tessa and then red merino and red viscose. And I, when I got that little bit of red viscose on my raspberry, I wished I had done exactly what you said and that was flip-flopped them. I think that would have added some really cool dynamics for sure. Okay, and does... 
or was I working directly on the bubble wrap? Yes, Peg, in that last part, I was just using the bubble wrap as my work surface. Um, does laying the fiber side to side and up and down help give it stretch? Oh, um, actually, no. Uh, if you want a little more stretch, then uh, I think a herringbone is better. If you want the, the fa a fabric to have more stretch, a herringbone would be a better option. Um, and in this case, I just, just crisscross is just fine for this for this project. Um, you asked, can you use the palm washboard instead of rolling, Deborah? Yes, um, I always use a combination of things, and you see that I use the palm washboard a little bit in the beginning, um, but then I like to roll. So it's really up to you. Some people like to felt in the dryer, so instead of doing the hand roll, they would roll the whole thing up, bind it, and then let it bounce in the dryer. Use whatever method you personally like to felt, and for anyone else who doesn't felt yet, you're just going to have to take it step by step and find, you know, follow our tutorials and other people's and see what you like to do to felt. But I like to do a combination of rubbing and rolling. And um, the fulling is always different depending on the project. Um, that <laughs> Esther says, that's a superpower I wish I had. Yeah, I wish I could felt that fast too. And then... Um, Someone's Karen Vague said that's 25 times each turn. So let's let me be clear about the rolling that you just saw. I rolled from each direction of the fiber, and let me just go to overhead real quick. So from each edge, the bottom I rolled a hundred times in this direction, a hundred times in this direction, a hundred times in this direction, a hundred times in this direction. Then you flip the whole thing over and repeat. The 25 times is this, what I do on 25 times. So you've got your roll and it's over your pool noodle. I rock and roll 25 or 30 times and then I give it a quarter turn on its axis. 25 or 30 times, a quarter turn on its axis until you've reached your 100. So that's how we do it. We're going to roll 100 times from each edge and I turn it on its axis so that all parts of the felt are down and all parts of the felt have a chance to have the pressure of my hands. Okay? Uh, does the rinse water have to be hot? No. All you want to do is um, get all the soap out for the moment. You just want to get the soap out. And how do you know when it's done? I encourage you to watch the pancake lesson because you, what you basically want is a pinch test before you pull your fiber off that you have a solid piece of fabric. So you can watch the Art for Welt fabric tutorial and the pancake lesson and both of those are going to give you a really good idea of how to wet felt. Okay? Cool. So now after you wet felt, what you're going to want to do is cut your puddles out of your fabric. And this is kind of fun because sometimes you like to see where the colors come together. Um, like on my, I'll show you here on my orange flowers, it looks different on one side than it does on the other. And it's just kind of fun to get that variation in fiber. And you don't have to, it can be, it can be totally solid. Um, but here's an example of my orange flower, and you can see how it's darker here and lighter here. Well, that was the back of the fabric. Let me move this red, it's probably making it hard to see. That was the back of the fabric. And then on this side, it's a little more solid orange. This one is the sunshine but you can see that the very bottom is a brighter yellow than the top. So that's kind of fun. You can choose where to cut depending on how you lay out your fiber. And this one's a little more solid and it's the only one that I didn't use any luster fibers on the top. There was a little bit of carryover from the fabric overall, um, but it doesn't go throughout the petals and the back's a little more solid. So that's kind of fun when you lay out colors and they're in bands. So again, I'll, I'll have you check out my Instagram because that's where I posted that. Um, what I do, and these you're going to get uh, the pattern when you download it, is I just kind of make a crude petal template. And each poppy should have four to six petals, truly. And mine, I actually liked the four best. It seemed to just do better for me. So all we're going to do here is just pin your pattern. And I like to get as much out of it as I can. Um, but pin your pattern to your fabric. And then you're going to cut out all your petals. And hopefully it would be fun if you even have enough fabric to have some practice practice petals. But to give you an idea of size, this would easily be two, three, 
and four. I could certainly get four across here and I'll tell you how big this is. I've got my ruler today. Um, the end result is uh, 12 and this started out as I think it was 16 uh, so almost 13 14 inches wide um, so I think I started it out at about uh, 18 inches wide actually and shrunk it down to this so you're just going to pin your flowers on there and then we're going to cut them out and I will look for your questions um, is there any way to gauge the amount of soap? Donna, you just want the water to be slick between your fingers. That's what you want. Sorry, I don't seem to have a difficulty time keeping my head out of the camera these days. I might have to adjust my camera. <laughs> Get in a little closer for you guys. Uh, let me see more of your questions. Do I ever roll diagonally? Um, who answered that? Kerry Kirk. You know, Kerry, I used to when I was doing like really big pieces and when I... Um, when I was having a difficult time getting things felted or uh, really thick things, but I often don't find that I need to felt, uh, that I need to roll diagonally. Usually you're trying to control shrinkage in all areas, and if you go four directions, that works. And you're also usually going in the direction of the fibers. Now, you don't have to hug the pattern exactly, and you can decide to make yours a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller than mine. I would say if you're going to make a bouquet of flowers, to maybe make one and then see how you feel about it afterwards. Um, you know, make one and test how you like the test how you like the petal size, because I made a few adjust adjustments to mine over time. So is this okay for y'all? Can you see uh, okay? I'm just going to trim up these edges here. And you're going to do this again. Go ahead and cut out all your petals. And I, like I said, I really kind of liked the four. Four seemed to work well for me. Can you flip the pattern piece to get better use of the fabric? Yes, Linda. And I wanted to mention, actually, so let me uh, hold this up for you and try and hold it still. It looks kind of shadowy for me, so I'm, ho I'm a little hopeful that you guys get a little um, better light than I have. I'm not sure. But the viscose uh, uh, or the tessa or whatever, I put in one direction, and it might show up a little better on this guy. I put it in one direction so that when I lay my petals down, I wanted them running up and down the petals as opposed to across the petals sideways because I wanted it to just add to what looks like the, you know, texture of a natural petal. And so that's the only thing I would say is think about the direction of those fibers in relation to the petals that you cut out. That's the only thing to think about. Okay, so now what we want to do with these individual petals is we, I want to put the wrinkles in them. And again, you don't have to, but if you want to put the wrinkles in them, here's where comes the two-part process. So uh, really quickly here, I'm going to show you the, um, what to do to create the wrinkles in these. And the first thing we need to do is um, do a little stitching on the petals here it is. We're going to do a little stitching on the petals to make them cluster. So here we go. Let's look at that. Okay, so just using regular sewing needle and thread, we're going to come up through the bottom of the petal, and you're going to come in like an eighth of an inch from the edge of your petal and just do this little running stitch. The one thing I learned was it's really better to um, gather the whole first row, uh, the whole first row kind of as you go along. Um, Diane Urban, so I'll let you just watch me stitch here. Diane Urban says, so this fabric will feel thinner than the art felt we made? Absolutely, it is thinner. Um, Jane says, does the fabric need to be dry or can we use it recently felted? I think you're going to find it a little bit nicer to work with if it's, if it's dry, but if you want to try a petal wet, go ahead. Um, 
Kevin said, can you mark out all the petals or will that show? Uh, you know, you're going to have to cut cut away the lines so that doesn't show. So here I am, I'm doing a second row and notice I'm running the second row from the back. This just worked for me and made it a little bit easier. So you're going to run your row, sec uh, the second row from the back and you're going about another eighth of an inch from the first one. And we're just going to terminate it right there and you want to tie a knot. Now don't do any kind of anchoring stitch. Um, because you're going to want to be able to manipulate that pull again in another minute. Um, so we're just going to tie it off in a knot there at the end, but don't like anchor it around the back and double secure it because you want to be able to then pull on those threads again in a minute and cinch it down a little more tightly. So do this for all of your petals or at least the flower that you think you want uh, the petals to be um, crinkled on. Okay, let me see what other questions do you have. Can I use the crinkle edge on a felt-to-head fabric for fig clothing? I don't know what that is, Karen. I don't know what that means. Um, and Esther says she's going to try two colored poppies next. It's really fun. It's super cool. Okay, so after you have all your petals stitched, now we're actually going to go back in and felt those individual petals again, but only lightly. It's just a little bit. We're going to seal down the blunt edges and I'm going to show that to you up close and personal. Um, just so I'm going to see if you can see this that seem feel like I'm having some shadow from my overhead camera. So let me hold this up and tell me, can you see that real blunt edge there uh, and see how open that edge is? And I'm going to just look for your comments for a second. If you can see how open and blunt the very edge of that cut is, let me know. Um, and what we want to do instead is once we felt them a little bit, one, it's going to give us the crinkles, but two, it's just going to seal that edge up. And it may not seem like much difference from your side, but you can clearly see the difference in person. So I'm going to answer a few more of your questions, but we're going to look at how do you then uh, wet felt these petals once you have them all stitched. And this is just a super uh, quick little video and an easy, uh, fun little process. So here we go wet felt our petals. Okay, so I have my water here. It's all soapy and murky. And then my leaves, my petals are all stitched. And I just want to make sure that that string is pulled tight so I have some cute little wrinkles in there. And I'm just showing you the wrinkles. You know, don't overthink it. You just need them to be wrinkly. This is a form of shibori, y'all. Y'all are always asking about shibori. This is, would be like an example of you know what shibori essentially does if you incorporate it into your felting. So notice that I'm just going to rub the edge of the petal and kind of heal. We call that healing the edge of the cut fabric. So I'm not using much pressure. I'm just rubbing right on the bubble wrap and or rubbing between my fingers and then just healing that edge and it's not even very much time. It's just a little bit. I'm not trying to overthink it. And then once I do that, I'm just going to crinkle it up a little bit. Wad it, crinkle it, felt it, just a little bit. And then what you can do after you do each one is just kind of um, tug on the strings. So <clears throat> I'm felting just a little bit and you'll go through and felt each of the petals. And then yeah, we're gonna rinse all the soap out and leave the strings in while we set them to dry. So I'm just gonna run through a few petals here and read your questions. Devin says, would you normally use thread that matches your color? No, I want to be able to see it, first of all, so that I remove it. And secondly, we're going to remove it. So that's not a worry. Um, shibori is a term, as a form of um, Japanese stitching. And originally, we would see it with like dyeing. So you would tie, I'm sorry, like you would tie things or bind things, basically. Think of it as binding and then dyeing. And you would often bind it with strings before you dye it. And then sometimes we bind things with thread or string and felting so that we can get interesting uh, and particular shapes that you couldn't otherwise get. Um, 
Paola asks, is this warm water? You know, actually, honestly, Paola, it's just room temperature water. I let my water run cold all the time. And I would say often you can just felt with, you know, room temperature water and then stick to use the hot water when you get to the fulling part, you know, when you really want to shrink it down. In this case, I never even worried about that. So um, let's see, am I almost through? I'm almost through all of my battles. <laughs> let's see, I guess I spent longer on this than I meant to. So let me um, uh, speed it up a little bit because you don't really need to see all of that. I'm just going to go ahead and say what you want to do then after you get to all of them is give them a good rinse and just get all of that soap out of there. And then you're going to set them to dry overnight. But I like to just cinch the strings a little bit more so that, uh, okay, then we're done. I thought I, I thought I should send them out. So what you're going to do is just cinch the strings a little bit more after you're done, after you've rinsed them all, and uh, set them to dry overnight. So I have those same petals here that I just showed you, the wet felting of, and we will um, take the strings out and uh, then look at starting to work on our stem and our I forget all the flower parts, <laughs> the stem and the stamens and, and all that. The pistol? The pistol? <laughs> I don't know my flower terms, so all of you botanists are going to correct me. Um, about how long per petal? Jennifer, honestly, just a, a 30, a minute. Just think of like a minute for every petal. You're not going to spend, you're not going to spend that long on every petal. So let's look at, let's take the strings out of these and see about starting to bring our flower together. Okay, so these are the ones, and let me zoom in here. If it's too shadowy, y'all, so let me let me know. Just It just feels shadowy on my side today. It seems like it might be a little hard to see. So now I'm just going to cut these strings out, and um, we'll be on our way. And I'll look for more of your questions. And thank you all so much for participating in the conversation and making it fun for all of us. Your questions are always helpful and always good. I've got a hold of my flower there. Oh, I wonder if this is the one. There's one that I didn't felt. Okay, so there is one petal, and you can see how cute, you know, those little wrinkles are. And I really didn't worry about overfelting them. This is not something that's going to be a toy. It's not something that's going to be, you know, played with. Hopefully, I, I want to, to tell you that I thought of this project uh, because my friend Robin said, what about doing something for Mother's Day? And I thought about how many people maybe can't visit their moms right now. Um, how many people have, may I have a family member in um, a facility that they can't go visit or even in the hospital. I know that the last few times I've sent flowers and plants, the person that I sent them to couldn't get them. And I mean, they would like take them out of their, they might show them to them, but then they would take them out of their room. And these would be really a fun bouquet that when you give to someone or if you send it to the hospital, they could keep it. And I just think that that's, yeah, that would be good. And they'll last a long, long time. Do you use regular thread or like quilting thread? Yeah, I just used regular quilting thread because that's what I have. Do you rinse with vinegar again? I did not rinse with vinegar in the first time. And oh, I have a confession for you. I didn't rinse these with vinegar at all. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, call me a rebel, why don't you? I didn't. I didn't rinse them with vinegar. Okay, but I think these are really fun, and you can see those great little crinkle and characteristic, you know, that they have now. And when the flower all comes together, they look even a little more realistic. Um, so yep, the string comes out, Tammy, and it keeps its shape. Now, honestly, you could felt them even harder if you wanted a super, super crinkly petal, but I just crinkled these a little bit. So what do we do with these? We want to put them on our stem. Uh, so for this, we're going to use 18-gauge floral wire, which for this part I should come out some. Uh, we're going to use this 18-gauge floral wire. And I used, um, I used our MC1 batting for my stems. And um, I'm going to show you how we made it. We're going to jump through it pretty fast. So the first thing I did was um, I just bent this end. And if you don't have a uh, pliers or something like that, just find something that you can bend it around. I used a dowel or whatever. You just want to put a little hook in there. And we're going to make a little 
ball on the end of this and then we're going to wrap the stem also. So great questions everybody. Now this is my MC1 batting if you've never used it before. It's just dreamy to work with. I'm going to peel a super thin layer so that we have that and oh you can peel this in so many layers. Um, I'm going to peel it in a super thin layer so we have it for wrapping the stem and if you're trying to get a narrow piece, which is what we want, fold it before you tear it. I've got string everywhere. Fold it before you tear it so that you can control it. And then you'll be able to control it better. It doesn't get away from you. Okay, so we're going to use that for wrapping the stem. I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to use another piece for creating the pistol. Everyone's asking about rinsing with vinegar, which I, I should like have a shortcut key for that to pop up the answer, but vinegar helps get all the soap out and helps bring the wool back to its naturally acidic state, which it likes to be. Um, and, you know, so its normal softness or its normal sheen is easier to see when you have that, when you have all that soap out and you have it back to it, its normal acidic state. Okay, so here we have, I have my little shepherd's hook right here, and I'm going to put that in there, seal this down as best you can, and then we're just going to make a big ball. Now, um, I call this my Q-tip, so I let the top poke off, and then I'm going to wrap that over. We want to make this kind of bulbous and round, so stay up here at the top, stay up here, and make this nice and round and kind of give it some character. Give it, make it uh, like a little dum-dum sucker, dum-dum sucker. Laura Harper is asking about the petals and she says, do the holes show? No, they don't show. Okay, so we're just wrapping this around and around and then I'm gonna tear this off at some point and we're just gonna needle felt a little ball right here on the end and I didn't bring I didn't bring myself a piece of foam that's funny but I am felting on felt at the moment oh here we go zoom right on in okay so just you know whatever needle you like to work with right now this is just a 40 triangle and I'm just really tacking all this wool down and you want to get it nice and firm so just needle felt all around this little ball get all that wool laying down and then go underneath here and needle felt it up this way as well. You want it to be, you want a nice little core here because this is how we're going to build off the inners of the flower. So needle felt underneath and needle felt all around until you get it nice and firm. We are going to go over here so anyone who just has an hour you'll be able to come back and watch the replay but it's going to take us a little while to get this flower built. I'll, I'll do my best to, to move it along. Okay so you're going to needle felt this until it's nice and firm and I'm going to jump ahead here to my uh, magic cookery bits and so here's an example of one that's nice and rounded and then I just needle felt it a little bit of bright yellow wool in here for the top of the pistol and um, you can do the same. You can needle felt wool, you can wrap string and sew it. I usually like to add one more, but for time's sake, I'm not going to do that. So I use some merino top. Like I said, you could use MC1 and just needle felt that right in there. Oh, I should show you, shouldn't I? Here's, the, here's what I used, which is this neon, I think it's called like electric lemonade. Um, so what I did was I just folded it so that it's at least in half. This is too long. It's at least in half, and then I'm going to pull it into a straight line like this. Don't worry about it not looking perfect at first, but you can just get it narrow like that, and then tack it down into two points, and then across, so like this end, and then this end, and that's how I just get that definition. Uh, Norma says, can you use MC1 bat and wet felting? Yes, you absolutely can. I think you'll find that you like the delicacy of these flowers a little bit more if you use something fine, finer, like a, a fine merino top. Uh, it's just my personal preference. I love wet felting with MC1, but it depends on the project. So um, I'm not going to, I will spend like way too much time, you know, doing this little part, these little tedious bits. 
but what you can do if the end is short you can twizzle it around and if it's long meaning what's left over you can just trim it off so you can just trim that off right there if it's too long and then tuck the rest underneath by needle felting it in so just needle felt it further into the head of your flower so here we go I'll just do this twist it around my needle if I can and tuck it in It's a spherical lollipop, Kate Williams says. Hi, Kate. Yes, it is a spherical <laughs> lollipop. Yes, like a dum-dum. Okay, so I'm going to get that all nice and tidy on my own. But I want to jump ahead and show you what we're going to do here with the stem. So I'm going to go out just a little bit. I'm going to wrap my stem in MC1 and then wet felt it. Uh, Karen says, can you use a multi needle to punch tool to speed up the bulb end I would say no because you have no control all those needles are going to bang into the wire and bend so don't try a multi needle punch tool for this tiny little piece it's not the right tool and I don't think that a multi needle punch tool works well when you're going to bang into the wire that's the most important thing okay so this is how we're going to wrap this stem you can make yours as thick or thin as you like I made mine thin I just start wrapping right here at the very base I'm going to wrap a few times just by twisting my wire, which I got kind of bent just there a moment. And all you have to do is twist your way down. Now, for those of you who don't work with MC1, you might have New Zealand Corydale or some, even if you're working with Merino Top, you might feel like it wants to come apart on you. But MC1 is really those little scales are going to really grip onto each other and hold together very well. So you can cover your piece very quickly. It doesn't look stripey because the bat, you know, doesn't look striated in the first place. And if you just keep scooting your hand down while you twist, you can cover this whole thing very quickly. So just get all the way to the end. Um, and when you get to the end, I just pull this off and then I'm going to just twist it on my hands. So right now I'm just dry felting in my hands. And then what I'm going to encourage you to do, seal this off down here so that it doesn't come apart. If you're using uh, something like New Zealand Corydale, you're probably going to have to wet felt it faster or needle felt it. But I'm going to wet felt this piece um, just by wetting it. You're just going to wet it. Um, sorry, y'all, I'm a little zoomed out. You're just going to wet it and soap it and gently felt it between your fingers. Now you don't have to, you could even use like a diluted fabric hardener at this point and just apply it and set it and let it to dry. But on mine, I just lightly wet felted them to kind of seal them into place. And you don't even have to, but if it's gonna be handled or shipped or something, you might wanna do that so that it holds up a little bit more. Um, so a couple of questions here are about the wool. Is there a reason we're not using MC1? I just like the I like how the merino top works for these flowers, this fine project, personally better than MC1. It's just a personal preference. You can do it with MC1 if you like. It's just a personal preference for me. If you want to use New Zealand Corydale, use New Zealand Corydale. It's more coarse than either MC1 uh, or uh, the merino top, but it's totally up to you. Okay, y'all. Now, we want to build the innards, the innards of our flowers, and I like to do that with these little tiny, um, these little tiny, oh, what do we want to call them? It's not a rope, it's just a strand. This is a wet felted strand. They're very easy to make. For this poppy, I'm going to use um, dark ones. Maybe I'll put some orange ones in there too. Um, and I just wet felted these on my bamboo mat. Someone asked earlier, can you wet felt on the bamboo mat? You, you can wet felt on a bamboo mat as long as your fabric isn't bigger than the mat. You don't want the edges of the bamboo to tear up your felt. So very quickly, I'm going to show you how I made these little guys, which are just little wet felted strands, so that we can put them to use in our project. So here we go. And for this, I'm using the mat. Okay, so I'm just using the merino top. You'll find that it's easier to pull off long lengths when you do have a roving or a sliver than the MC1, but you could use MC1 for this part too. You just want to get yourself long strands. Um, and you can make a few at once. They're, they get kind of fussy, but you can totally do it. 
And what I like to do is, pardon my head there, is I like to get the coil or the, the strand round before I get it wet. I think if you get it wet, um, if you get it wet before you get it round, that it's a lot harder to work with. And I know you might be thinking, why isn't she working with the bamboo the other way? Um, meaning the slats running the same direction as the rolls. And I'll just tell you that initially, for some reason, when you have these little tiny pieces, it's easier to get a little friction from the string in the bamboo mat rather than the um, you know blades of bamboo themselves. So I just use those to my advantage. You could also use your super bubble or if you have a, you know, a black carpet mat or something, then you could do that. Now, this bit is a little bit fussy. You see how it wants to skip and not kind of roll on the um, bamboo. But I do like to make many at a time. And so what happens is I just roll it through the bamboo and then untangle them and through the bamboo and untangle them. So they're not felting together, but they do kind of stick together. And if you don't unstick them, then they will felt together. <laughs> so it's a little fussy, but it really doesn't take that long. And we just want something that we can then cut uh, because we're going to insert those into the inside of our flower. Okay, these are all great, great questions. Linda asked about the, the wire that I used in the stem. It is cloth covered. The green Jane that I used on my stems is bamboo, one of my favorites. Um, okay, great, perfect, that's true. Questions. Awesome, awesome questions, y'all. Okay, so this is all I do. That's all I do. I'm just going to create these little strands. Rinse the soap out or don't rinse the soap out. It actually doesn't matter. You just want to set them to dry overnight. I'm not trying to make these things um, like super stiff or anything. I just want something that I can work with. I have done, um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen, well, I'll, sh I'll show you when we get there and I'll, I'll, I'll show you when I'm trying to talk about without talking about. Okay, so what I like to do with these little bits is I wanna cut them and then wrap them around uh, the, the pistol here so that they're sticking out before I put my petals on. Um, and let's see, I'm gonna use, this might be weird. Oh, I have my fabric, hold please. I'll get a little piece of my, uh, I'm gonna cut a little strip of fabric. Okay, so let me get back to my um, here. Okay, so we have all our stuff. What I want is I'm going to get a little piece of red fabric to work with and we're going to use this to build the inner part of our flower. Y'all, I'm not a super measury measury person. To some degree you're going to have to kind of find your way, meaning like I'm not the person who's going to give you exact dimensions. I find my way on almost every project, so I just want to encourage you to you know, have fun, <laughs> have fun, wing it a little bit if you can. And um, I need to grab something. Okay. I need a piece of foam. You're going to want your needle felting foam for this part. Oh, look, it lightens up. My whole camera <laughs> lightens up as soon as I add that foam. Um, I cut myself a little piece of fabric here, and then here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut these guys. I want to say you can vibe like how big you want it to be uh, compared to your little pistol, and I think about about an inch or so is good, and you can trim them after. So all you want to do is go in and cut these guys. Cut them up. Is it possible to just use wool yarn? Oh yeah, you can just use wool yarn. You can use whatever you want. This is just, this is just what I came up with. This was just my way. And I did find that I like to have more than one of these little snakes, uh, more than one. I just like to have more than one. And you know what? Just for fun and dimension, you could even add a few orange in here if you want and just, you know, add a little life to it. Why not? We're gonna spread all these out here in just a second. Um, what are all of you saying? Um, oh, there's Poppy Day in the UK. That sounds fun. Why don't we have a Poppy Day? Or do we have a Poppy Day? And I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we have a Poppy Day. 
I have no idea about these things. It seems like in the UK there's fun festivals that we don't have. And uh, yeah, I should attend for some of these things. Okay, this is probably enough for this flower. I think you're going to want some of these, you know, made up and ready. And again, this is just my way. I'm interested to see what you all come up with. I'm sure you're going to come up with lots of variations. And as always, your flowers or creations are so often more decadent than mine. You'll bead them out and do things that I have no patience for. And I will ooh and ah and wonder over the amazing creations that you come up with. I will, I promise. Um, how many will you use for each flower? I have no idea. At least two of these, at least two of these long snakes I'll use for each flower. I don't count. I don't count. You can take them away. You can add more in. Whatever you like, whatever you like. Okay, now I'm just going to needle felt these to this fabric. So um, you can try and use, if you need to, you can try and use a little of your merino top. I would probably actually, I'm going to use the dark. I'm going to use the dark on top just to kind of anchor these down. So you could, you know, this fiber, this fabric underneath could also be the dark fabric. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just going to, the dark fabric would be just as nice. Um, so here we go. And now we're just going to needle felt these on. We just want to attach them. Thank you. Hold them down. Um, MC1 would work really good for this top layer too. Be easier to grab onto, that's for sure. But just be patient. And all we want to do is just kind of tack these down onto that fabric. And you don't have to overthink it either because we're going to needle felt this more. You just want each of these little pieces to stay in place when we move to the next step. Now this is someplace some of you would like your clacky tool, uh, the needle, <laughs> the multi-needle punch tool by Clover. I call it the clacky tool. Um, I don't use it all that often, but a little project like this it would be good for. And this wool I put over the top is just to help anchor it down, help to give me something to grab these little felted bits on with. Oh, I'm using the 42 triangle needle. It doesn't really matter. Switch to the 38 after a minute if you want. The 38 is going to be a little, a little more aggressive. I just wanted to start it with something a little more gentle. Because sometimes, sometimes a more aggressive needle wants to stab right through what you're working on rather than help grab onto it. So play it by ear and see what you like. And thanks for all of this great commentary. Um, if we use something not wool, could we glue it to the strip? Sure, you know, there's no rules. Look, if you're playing with me, there's no rules. Get it on there however you want. I don't use a lot of glue, and that's just a personal preference. So have as much fun as you want and do it whatever way you want to do it. So here we go. I'm just going to wrap it right around this. And like I said, this could be uh, this could be dark gray. I would probably prefer it to be a little bit dark gray myself, uh, but we're just going to wrap it around. And you may not want the orange in there. Maybe that looks too Halloween-y, but I don't care. I'm going to give it a go. And if you don't like it, you can take those out and add other ones in. So all you're going to do now is needle felt this to the pistol and work your way around so that it really stays on there. I'll zoom in just a little bit for you. So I wrapped it all the way around, and you want it to be, you know, you don't want it to snake down here. You want it to stay up off that because you're going to form a base that you're going to put your petals onto. This is what the petals are going to attach to right here. So y'all are educating me about Poppy Day. It's Remembrance Day for the end of World War II. It shows you how much I learned in high school. <laughs> American Legion Poppy Day is 524. Well, what do you know? We are like just in the right time for American Legion Poppy Day. So now, do they only use red poppies or do they use other poppies? Like Holly said, you know, um, and even Gentry Lord said that the California state flower is the poppy, and I lived in California for many years, so I have a great appreciation for the California poppy myself. Um, do they only use red or do they use other colors? 
Oh, Tammy says she was working on a flower just like this, but she was stuck. Well, I'm so glad, Tammy, if this helps. Now, I want to show you all just super quick, quick, and then we got to get our petals on because I know that I'm way over. Um, this is, I made each of these individual, and like I said, you may not want the orange in there, but my poppy's red and orange, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, there is a process, it's sort of like cutting an eyelash, uh, which I used at first on this flower, and I didn't love it on this one right here. I didn't love it, but uh, you might try it even with commercial felt. And I'm just going to do a quick, quick demonstration. It's a little bit faster. You don't have to wet felt uh, the individual pieces, but what you do is you basically take a strip. This is like one inch by four inch. You fold it over, and then you cut it. Uh, sorry, you don't cut on the fold. That would be the mistake. Um, or you could not cut it on the fold. These would be really short. Actually, you could just cut it like this um, so that you don't cut on the fold, but you could just cut it like this and then apply this to your flower. Now what I found is because my fabric is so delicately felted and uh, I didn't have a lot of variation, like I didn't have multiple layers to hold it down, what would happen is it wants to come apart. And that's why I don't like doing it with this because my fabric was so lightly felted. So if you're going to do this, then make sure the part that you use for this part, and so you would wrap that here, make sure this is super well felted, like really well felted so that it won't come apart when you cut it. So. Uh, mine is so softly felted that I didn't want to do that. Uh, and I was just using the edges. Okay, so here we go. Now, we got to get to this point. This is really fun. So here we go. Now we have our petals. And what I found is the easiest to do, and I really did find that I liked the four. Um, and you're going to want to find where's that height um, that you're going to put two petals opposite each other. And uh, two petals opposite each other like this. And we're going to do one at a time, but I'm just going to show you. Two petals opposite each other, and then we're going to put the other petals on the outside. So let's start with the first one, and don't worry about this tail. The tail down here might be too long. That's totally okay. I made it a little bit long so that you would have some room to work with. And what you want to do is stretch this out as much as possible before you needle felt it down. So we're just going to needle felt it right to that little pistol that we're building underneath. Needle felt your first one on and then see do you like the height of the petals. If you don't, you can raise it up. And at first, you just kind of want to needle felt it around and get it in place. Test your placement and see do you like it. I'm using a 38, oh, this is just a triangle. I definitely could use something more aggressive, but I don't want to go up to a 32. I don't want something that's going to leave huge holes. Use a 38 star, a 38 spiral, um, but not, this is a star. Let's try a star. But don't use a 32 or a 36 because you're going to leave super huge gaping holes in your piece and kind of tear it up. Okay, so now we have the first one on, and I think that height is pretty good for the innards of it. And um, this bottom part, what you can do is get yourself so that you can needle felt it all the way underneath the base here, and then trim it off. So once you're, you're happy with the height, then needle felt it all the way underneath. And then you can trim it off. Okay, is there a tulip tutorial? This, no, this is my first real flower tutorial. Uh, actually, we did, um, we, did a, we did a couple of flower tutorials in the past, um, but they, they weren't very specific. We did do one, um, we did a peony, and that was thanks to one of our friends. Uh, I think that was Mary Beth Colton, I want to say, who gave us that tutorial. Um, but it didn't have the stem on it. So currently, no, there's not a tulip. But I betcha that you could figure it out from here. All right, so now what I like to do is make sure that these two petals are about at the same height right there. Um, and then I'm going to needle felt this one in place. And again, we're just going right into that pistol underneath kind of find your way if 
could you sew the petals on? Well, sure, you could, but th you know, this is going to, then where you're going to hide the threads. So once you sew your petals on, then you've got to hide your threads. And in this case, you're going to get a more developed flower. I, I would say, why go through all this if you're going to sew them on? You know, there's other routes you could take. You don't have to make the individual petals, but this is going to give you, you know, a little more of a realistic look, if you will. Definitely more fancy than something made from store-bought felt. Definitely more fancy than a paper um, flower that you made. So you can, we're going to refine all those underneath bits. Um, let me see if I like my heights. So already, you know, it's starting to shape up here. Um, you can refine those underneath bits as you go along. I'm going to leave this tail a little bit long. I'm going to make sure that I'm happy with it. Uh, it feels like it wants to be up a little bit. And let's see what else you have to say. Thank you all so much for this. So I'm excited to know whether uh, you're now you're thinking about making your own. Are you going to, if you've never wet felted before, are you going to like give the wet felting a chance so you can try and make your own? Um, are you going to make some flowers this week? And if so, who are you making them for? Are you going to make them for you? Or are you going to make them for a neighbor? Are you going to make them for a friend? My husband was just... He was out at CVS today trying to get us some more alcohol for sanitizing the place and um, they didn't have any alcohol at the time but the nice lady sold him like a, a bottle of, a big bottle of hand sanitizer that like wasn't really for sale <laughs> but she had it back there and she sold it to him. So I thought this would be a really nice thank you to her for, to her for doing that kind thing for a stranger to give her a nice felted poppy. Okay, so you see where these come together here? I'm not going to fuss about that too much because I'm going to put a petal right over that seam as well. I'm going to put one, and you can see my variegation changes there. That's interesting. I'm going to use this one right here. And I like on these outer petals to just stretch them about as far as I can, um, as far as I can around so that they're going to almost meet on the opposite side. I, you know, Angela says Venus flytrap. I wished, I almost asked a moment ago when I showed those two, how many of you just saw that and would consider making a Venus flytrap? Because when I showed that top, that's exactly what it looked like on the, on the camera from my view. I'm glad I'm not the only one who saw that. Um, Lauren wants to make a bouquet for her dining room. And Diana says she'll make a fabric tomorrow and start, meaning she'll make her wet felt fabric. That is awesome. Um, Linda's going to try and make some this week. And Rainbow Fiber says definitely she's going to try and make one. Well, I'm assuming Rainbow Fiber is a she. I don't know that. Uh, Kathy says she's going to make a bouquet of different types herself. Yes, now we're going to have a little more complex flower next week, so if you're going to give the fabric a go, you might consider making the fabric next week, and you're going to wait. want to make it more, you're going to need more petals in the same colorway. Okay, so let's get our last one on, and I'm just kind of adjusting my petals before I go because I'm about to needle felt right over this part right here, and I, you can see that I changed direction on my... I changed direction on my felt there. I'm going to make sure. Yeah, I changed direction on my felt there. So um, that's okay. It doesn't really matter. These are all these are all fantasy flowers in a way anyway. And again, next week we'll add um, the leaves on to our flowers. So the flower construction will go a little more quickly. Uh, well, I don't know if it will go more quickly because the flower is more complex, but you'll have, if you've watched this lesson, then you'll have a little more basic idea of how we're doing and we might be able to um, jump ahead a little bit and start with the wet felted fabric portion. Um, I'll see if I can put out dimensions and information on that and maybe even we'll post the full version of this tutorial. Um, meaning just making the wet felt fabric as a standalone. Okay, so now what I want to show you is um, notice underneath here, see how these are kind of apart. And I know that truly in a poppy, as a poppy opens, well, these, you know, these two little uh, petals fold out um, and then these 
you know, they, they start to kind of fold out and open up. Now you can add four, you can add five or six petals to yours if you like. Most of the poppies I found that I liked had about four. But what I like to do is go around underneath here and then needle felt these little strips a little better together so that the, the, the petals hold together. So if I can show you like underneath here, you can see is that I've needle felted them a little bit more. If you have fiber in a matching color, see how they're just bound a little bit further up so once you get all of your petals where you like them then you can go around and needle felt these little joins just a little bit more just tuck them in just like that you can also lay them flat on your foam if that's easier and you can also needle felt you can needle felt from the inside out but it's easier to see what you're doing if you go from the outside in and just go all around and get all of those joins so that you are happy with them. And like I said, if it's easier for you, you could apply a little fiber over the top, but they're so softly felted that you shouldn't need to. And you can continue to sculpt this down here, and you can even add a little green of your same stem fiber underneath here if you want to kind of seal off the bottom. Um, so Gail says she can't wait to try this. Marlene says, feed me Seymour, which is, of course, from our, <laughs> let me hold these up, uh, a course from the Venus flytrap. And let me see if I can hold this up to match now. Um, I might, uh, I might have some fun this week adding to my bouquet and uh, making some more. And you can open yours as much as you want. You can smooth out the wrinkles as much as you want. I like the variety altogether. I think that I found I was really attracted to uh, fields of poppy photos that had more than one color of poppy in it and that was probably the thing that made me the most happy <laughs> is seeing like a variety of colors so again I want to see um, on Instagram search for Marie Spalding in joy and it's s-p-a-u-l-d-i-n-g I will add it to the description down below but there's a picture in my recent stories and I hold up the fabric that I made to make these petals here and all of these flowers too and you can get an idea it included the yellow uh, this yellow bit too and you'll be able to see the color I'll see if I can um, share any more pictures of that in our Facebook group again which is living felt friends so I hope that you will join us over there and I want to see if there are just any um, final questions. Let's see, so Devin says, what kind of flowers are you wearing? Devin, these are just some of the fun like trumpet flowers, if you will, that we wet felted together a year or more ago. So you can find those on our YouTube channel under our wet felting section. We might need to add a wet felting flower section if we get much more. Um, I will uh, show you I will um, have, a, like I said, a different flower for you next week. So let me see what else you all have. Brenda says she can't wait to get started, and it's such a pretty project. And I'm so glad because these, for me, are just super, super fun to make. Uh, could you put lush fibers on both sides, Jennifer asked. Absolutely, you can. What you'll notice when we laid out the fiber is that the first directions were going, the first fibers were going horizontal, and then they were going vertical. So um, on the back side, though, you can make them go the same direction just think about that so if you want to put your luster fibers on in the vertical do the same thing on the flip side so that you don't have stripes going around this way and on one side and stripes going up on the other so I would put them both in the same direction either both horizontal or both vertical for when you go to cut it out um, oh thank you Esther says such a lovely bouquet and Patricia says that she loves this project um, Dawn says thank you thank you Dawn could we put a piece of felt the leaves for next week should, yes oh thank you for that question um, Diana says should we felt a piece for the leaves next week yes go ahead and felt a piece for the leaves next week um, this is our greens uh, studio pack which I set aside for mine and I think that I'm going to use this guy right here which is asparagus um, but there's are just some really fun uh, greens in there and I think asparagus would would probably go well and you could also make it multicolored if you want and this one is leaf so leaf is a little more bright uh, and this is I think that one's asparagus and I think either of those would be really cute in the leaves just asparagus looks a little more natural and closer to the bamboo 
We also have lots of greens you can choose from for your project. So definitely felt uh, for the leaves next week. And again, in the PDF, I just give you a guide. You know, you can look up whatever leaves. These are my <laughs> very bad hand-drawn leaves, uh, but we'll cut these out and we'll actually um, cut at least double, uh, make double the fabric that you think you need. And we'll look at a couple of different ways that you can uh, make your leaves and we'll wrap them on our stems and make them all fun. And you don't have to have leaves on there at all. It's, it's totally an option for you. Let me see what else. Hibiscus flowers would be pretty. Um, uh, Claire says she needs to wet felt her sheet, but she's still excited. I'm so glad. And um, anything else? For those of not on FaceTime, can you say something about what sort of fabric we need to felt for next week? Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm not on FaceTime, but on Facebook. Um, so this is uh, the fabric that I felted for next week, and I did make mine multicolored um, so I would say make even, I might make a, a sheet this big of all one colors, but I'm going to use multiple colors in mine. Uh, just, you want them all to go together. So this piece right here is probably 18 inches by 14 inches and it just weighs, it weighs under two ounces. So think about an ounce and a half or something like that and make yourself a big sheet. Um, yeah, so basically the same like we did today, but you're going to need, you just think of making one flower, in this case not multiple flowers, because it's more complex, and then see how you like it. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Thank you all so much for playing with me. I'm going to draw a few names. The fairies brought in uh, the, the hat full of names. And let me tell you what the prizes are. So here's your names for everyone who's been participating with me in the live show. Um, and for those of you who are watching the playback, remember that you can comment down below. Our prizes today are either you can choose a Merino Top Studio Pack, and this is the summer flowers that we have right now. Um, usually it has red in it. I just want to make a note. It, we're backordered on Merino Top Red right now. Um, so we put in the Raspberry, which is one of the colors that I used on my wet felt fabric for the poppy. You can choose this or any of the studio packs. It's got six colors of merino top in it. Or you can choose some of our favorite wet felting tools. So we're giving you a bar of our coveted uh, olive oil soap from France, a ball brass, and a yard of the wet felting mesh. So I'm gonna draw two names right now. Um, and you get to choose, so just use the contact us page on our website and let us know which of those two prizes you want. And for, if your name doesn't get called, just remember to leave a comment down below and tell us what your favorite takeaway was. So I've drawn two names, I have not looked. Here they go, we're gonna see them together. Thank you all for felting with me. We have Susan Van Lith. I happen to know that you are in Central California on the Golden Coast. Congratulations, Susan. And the other one is Kevin Nobles. Oh, that's really fun. I know both of these folks. So Kevin Nobles is just up the road right here in Texas. The reason I know these people is because they hang out in our uh, Facebook group. They're part of our regular community. And for all of you who've joined us today, I hope that you'll join us too. Uh, if you're not on Facebook, maybe you're on Instagram. So tag us on Instagram. Instagram with anything you make. Um, like I said, if you want to join Facebook, you have to answer three questions. You have to have a head in some kind of Facebook history uh, because we don't do anonymous. We don't do spams. We don't do links out. There's no marketing from a bunch of folks. It's just a real clean, fun group. And you're going to see a ton of flowers, I think, posted over the next few days. It's a little more of a complex project, so I know it takes a little more time. And I just wish you all the best and great, great fun with it. And wherever you are, I hope that you take really really good care of yourself this week. Stay close to your family. Stay close and true to your heart. Treat yourself super well and just tell yourself all good things because that's the only truth that there is. We love you. We appreciate you and thank you so much for spending this time with me. I can't wait to see your flowers. Okay y'all, I'll see you next week. I hope, I hope. Thank you so much. Bye.